Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Welcome to the very first session of these Research and Innovation Days, which uh, is the handover ceremony where our mission board chairs will hand over uh, to commissioners to the college, to Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for Innovation and Research, the outcome of the work done on the Horizon Europe missions. I don't think we could have had a better setting than the research and innovation days for this handover of the mission reports. These Horizon Europe missions are about connecting research with public policies. They are about showing and demonstrating that the European Union can act decisively on cancer, on climate adaptation, on ocean, on cities and on soils. So I'm really uh, very proud that these Research and Innovation Days are the setting where this handover is taking place. There will be a lot of substance during this uh, session, so I stop here and I have again um, the pleasure, uh, Maria, to hand over to you. Thank you very much, Jean-Éric, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be here together with you for this first session of our Research Innovation Days. I think that it's a great symbol that this first session is dedicated to the report of huge work that our missions board have produced the last months. So I think that at the beginning we can say it is time to act because we are facing challenges and because we need common answers. Why cancer? Because cancer is a huge threat for Europe's citizens and health systems. There are more than 200 cancer-related diseases. And Europe has a quarter of all cancer cases in the world. It is a high number, especially if we consider that Europe is less than 10% of the world's population. Why a mission on climate change? Because climate change is one of the greatest threats facing humanity, with potentially devastating impacts on people, the environment, the economy. Reducing our carbon footprint is crucial. Despite our best efforts, a certain level of global warming will continue to happen. Why smart cities? Because cities cover about 3% of the land on Earth, yet they produce about 72% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. In urban areas, we have all the possible elements of pollution, like transport, buildings and industry. Why the health of our oceans and rivers and waters, so essential for our lives and our biodiversity, they are under pressure like never before. Decades of pollution and damaging uses have severely degraded the conditions of aquatic ecosystems. Why healthy soil? Because life on Earth depends on healthy soils. The increasing demand for land, for urban development and infrastructures, in consuming our most fertile soils, inappropriate or unsustainable use of soil, and the way we deal with our waste is affecting soil health, the quality of our food, and has devastating effects on habitats. And it's not that we have not tried. Billions are spent every year using dispersed initiatives in separate programs and efforts. Each of these initiatives may be doing a great job, but the whole does not match the sum of the parts. And that is the idea behind the missions, to tackle these issues in a new way, Research and innovation will set the direction, provide the stimulus to address challenges that go far beyond research and innovation itself. And missions are a key feature of the Horizon Europe program, but they are not just about research and innovation. Our aim, as you understood it well, is to create European missions in five areas, in the domain of health to tackling cancer, and at the same time, to address European commitment on tackling climate change, we propose missions on adaptation to climate change, including societal transformation, 
healthy oceans, seas, coastal and inland waters, climate neutral and smart cities, soil health and food. Along the way, the mission boards have discussed widely with input from stakeholders, from research innovation experts, from firms, from users. I'm most grateful for this. I appreciate the great efforts that were made to engage with citizens, to learn what they consider important, what are their hopes, and how they can be involved in delivering the results of these missions. With the contacts, the meetings, and the travels of the mission board members, there have been events in many, if not all, member states. And I want to stress the great work done by the mission boards and thank them all, in particular the mission chairs, Mrs. Connie Heidegard, Professor Walter Ricciardi, Mr. Pascal Lamy, Mrs. Hannah Gronkiewicz Waltz, and Mr. C. Verman. Now, after more than a year's work, we stand at the end of the first phase as the mission boards present their ideas. So now, I hand over here to listen to the distinguished guests, their views. Maria, thank you very much uh, for, for putting uh, the emissions in, in the context, delivering solutions in society thanks to European research and innovation. And we have uh, uh, on stage um, uh, with us uh, Commissioner Wojciechowski, uh, Commissioner for Agriculture. Commissioner, welcome. Thank you very much for having joined this morning. Commissioner Sinkevicius, Commissioner for Oceans and uh, Fisheries and Environment. Commissioner, welcome uh, as well. And will join us uh, uh, also um, uh, digitally in a moment, uh, uh, Commissioner Kiriakizu, who is Commissioner for Health. So, uh, welcome, Commissioners. It's, I think, uh, Maria, particularly important that Commissioners are with you today because the missions are about connecting outcomes of research and innovation to European public policies. And this is, I think, what we will now hear from, indeed, the mission board chairs. So we will now have um, a short presentation of uh, each of the missions by the key actor, the chair of the board. Uh, in all cases, these boards were composed of scientists, of uh, colleagues with experience in public policy, of uh, economic actors, so a, a wide combination putting together science and society. And I think that was uh, certainly one of the reasons why these mission boards and I'll come coming forward, Maria, with very concrete recommendations to make a difference in society. We will start with the first mission, which, is, um, which was led by Connie Hedegaard. I think for many of you, I don't need to introduce Connie. Connie uh, was a commissioner for climate um, and has been uh, extremely active in this area for many years. And I think she was the best possible choice to lead this mission on climate adaptation and societal transformations. So I hand over to Connie to present the outcome of the work. Hello, everybody. As the chair of the mission for adaptation to climate change and societal change, it is my great pleasure today to formally hand over our report. If anything, the COVID-19 crisis has taught us all some lessons. We have seen how costly economically speaking and in human terms, how costly it is to ignore science, to meet the warnings that we have received unprepared. We have seen the necessity of focusing more on building resilience in our societies. We have also seen that it means a lot to have political leaders who actually dares lead. And if they do so, they can gain people's respect. And the good thing that we have seen during this pandemic is that actually change is possible. So our mission board has chosen uh, this vision for our work. The vision is that we want a climate prepared and resilient Europe by 2030. Okay, how do we get that? How do we work much better together in combating the effects of climate change? And how do we handle floods, droughts, 
forest fires, the behavioral change that is also needed, the systems change that we also would need to look at. How can we break down the silos and handle more challenges at once? We think that one very strong and good idea would be to work with 200 communities and regions to exchange best practices, to exchange data, to help each other identify where are the best practices and maybe also sometimes where are the not to do things. But also, could we shortcut to better solutions, to more scale faster by identifying where are there some gaps in our knowledge and where are there areas where by working together we could get the scale and the speed in place much, much faster. That's why we've chosen this as one of our core initiatives. And the other one is in 100 regions, actually to establish 100 deep demonstration projects where we really look into many of the challenges, find the solutions, of course, in order to be able to disseminate it afterwards to all the regions in Europe in order to fulfill the vision. We we'll tried to reach out to member states, and to citizens who have been very engaged in this. And I can only say, if you think that this sounds attractive also for your organization, please don't hesitate to work with us, to partner up with us. We are absolutely confident we could e do even better in Europe by working together. And that is basically what our mission is all about. Tony, thank you very much uh, for this um, very punchy presentation of uh, this so important mission. I will now immediately move to uh, Walter Ricciardi, Professor of Health um, and Chair of the Mission Board on Cancer. Uh, Walter also led um, uh, Italy's uh, COVID-19 response, but still managed to chair this mission board to deliver today the outcome of its work. So, Walter, over to you. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to hand over officially today the plan for Mission Board Cancer to the European Commission. Cancer is a growing challenge for Europe. It is an umbrella term for more than 200 diseases. These have in common the uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal body cells affecting tissues and organs. And considering that Europe has a quarter of all cancer cases and less than 10% of the world population, this is clearly a challenge, one of the five major societal challenges in Europe. And the number of new cancer cases diagnosed is projected to increase by 25% in Europe by 2035. And if we don't act now, of course, this could be a serious problem for all European citizens. Europe needs better, more equitable prevention and diagnosis, treatment and care, survival rates, and post-cancer quality of life. And with the mission board members, we have worked hard to provide all stakeholders in Europe, politicians, managers, professionals, citizens, patients, caregivers, the best possible answer to conquering cancer as a mission possible for the next seven years. We have produced five intervention areas. The first is understanding, understanding better the causes of cancer, understanding better why some rare cancers happen, understanding better some, why some cancers are not druggable today. And this is something that, of course, we have to invest in. And Europe is the only place where we have all the possibilities to do that. Second is preventing the preventable. Of course, uh, preventing cancer is not only a matter of medicine, it's a matter of economy, of social behavior, and of course, this has serious implication. We want to help politicians and government to take the best decision to prevent cancer, of course, uh, reducing the risk factors and improving lifestyles for all European citizens and understanding better why, even if we know that eating too much, not practicing physical activities, uh, drinking too much alcohol, smoking tobacco is something that we know is going to cause cancer sooner or later or serious health problems, but people don't modify their behavior. And of course, we want to improve diagnosis and treatment. And we understand that this has an incredible range in Europe, ranging from some of the best possible care, best possible diagnosis, best possible treatment, but still too many people, particularly in some areas of Europe that do not access. And so 
equity and equitable access is a serious uh, uh, challenge for us and we have to improve on that. We have produced 13 recommendations for bold actions. Recommendations that in some cases uh, provide the possibility for funding programs uh, through competitive goals, but the mission is not only research. The mission is support to member states, is support to individual citizens in to improving their lives. So, so our recommendation range uh, from uh, prevention to diagnosis and treatment to quality of life to, to equitable actions and to horizontal area to improve the culture of citizens but also of professionals and transferring the best possible cancer culture to all of Europe. So we are confident that this can happen and we are confident that this can happen in Europe because in Europe we share values of solidarity, of equity, of justice, something that in other parts of the world is still serious and challenge and we all share the culture of universal coverage. Of course, this has to be a serious interaction between the different uh, souls of the Commission. Europe's Bidding Cancer Plan is another opportunity. We are working together with all the director in the European Commission to make this reality come through. Cancer can be conquered. We will conquer it. Walter, thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you very much also to connecting so deeply uh, your mission with Europe's values. I now move to the third uh, mission, the mission on, on oceans, seas and, and waters, uh, which was uh, led and chaired by Pascal Lamy, Pascal who is uh, on stage uh, uh, with us. Uh, Pascal, good morning. I don't think I need to introduce him. He was uh, Commissioner for Trade and Director General of the World Trade Organization and he has done many, many other things as well to which I don't think I need to speak. Pascal, over to you. Thanks very much. Good morning. Thanks very much and uh, good morning. Uh, as my other colleagues who were given the privilege of uh, chairing these missions, I'm happy uh, today after one year of hard work to hand over our mission report to, to the Commission. The story of our mission about healthy oceans and water is uh, fairly simple. One, healthy oceans and waters are uh, an essential condition for life on Earth. Second, they are in deep trouble. And they are in deep trouble because we keep damaging them. Third, hence the imperative necessity of restoring our European uh, oceans and waters by uh, 2030. This is the theme, the target, the objective of our mission, restore EU oceans and waters by uh, 2030. We call it uh, Mission Starfish 2030. Now, why Starfish? Uh, because we were inspired by this uh, small animal who's very nice, very fragile. Kids love starfishes and we will need kids on board. And after all, it's a sort of star which we can touch with our hand because we care about it. So this is the simple story. And that's the end of the pitch which everybody understands about oceans and waters. The rest is horribly complex. Restoring EU oceans and waters is a simply horribly complex endeavor because we have to cope with all the sources of this degradation, one after another, and there are many, and they interact with each other Hence, the necessity of a all-encompassing, holistic approach that touches many, many bits of our own economic, industrial, agricultural, cultural, social behaviors. So we've translated this uh, very imperative target into a series of very precise objectives by 2030, what we need to do by 2030 
the, all the steps we need uh, to get there and with uh, checkpoints in uh, 2025. So it's a very precise, a very constraining, a very detailed expert roadmap. Let me give you uh, a few examples of what we had to do. Uh, we have to build, for instance, a digital twin of what we call our hydrosphere, which is our oceans and waters. Uh, we have to get to uh, zero carbon aquaculture. Uh, we have to build clean ferries. Uh, we have to protect 30% of our EU waters within uh, marine uh, protected areas. We have to remove 15% of obsolete dams in our European uh, rivers. We have to ban single-use plastics for reasons I don't need to explain. We have to equip all fishing gears with geopositioning detection systems by 2030. And we also have uh, to put together a sort of pan-European ocean and water literacy program. These are only a few examples. Uh, let me finish with uh, three uh, short remarks. First, the main challenge we've identified from the very beginning in order to get there is to fill a gap which exists between public opinion and our hydrosphere. Most people believe we have a problem with our atmosphere. Very few people know and believe we have a problem with our hydrosphere. So filling this gap, which is about science, which is about culture, which is about art, which is about reason, which is about emotion, is an essential part of this mission. Second, we have a serious governance problem. Uh, the reality being that whereas we have a holistic approach, the reality today is that politically and administratively, it's all over the place. So we need a solid reform of the governance of our hydrosphere in Europe, and we propose to set up a European uh, hydrosphere agency. Third, and this connects with what has already been said this morning, uh, we, of course, from the very beginning decided, and the Commission was very pushy on that, to engage uh, citizens, stakeholders. We've done that for the whole year. We will keep doing this until the end of this year on the basis of our proposals. And we got an incredibly fruitful interaction with citizens and stakeholders. I'm amazed at the amount of questions, of observations, of requests for interaction which we got. And I think this is good news because people don't want just to engage with ideas. They don't only tell us you should do this or this because I care about this or this. They are ready themselves to participate, to contribute through action, which I think is uh, good news for a sort of co-creation of science and achieving this sort of goal with the support of public opinion. Uh, I hope that given uh, the enormous amount of political energy which we will need to get where we propose to be, this is good news for the phase two, which now starts and which is about gathering this political energy. Pascal Lamy, thank you very much. Uh, Pascal, you, I think the starfish uh, illustrates, as is the case across the missions, that we need to join up across policies and across Europe. I now move to um, Hanna gronkiewicz vals uh, Hanna Gronkiewicz uh, chaired the Polish Central Bank, but more important, she was the mayor of Warsaw. Hanna, over to you. Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hanna gronkiewicz vals and I am the Chair of the Mission Board for Climate Neutral and Smart Cities. Today I am proud to present our mission proposal, which is the result of intense work by the Mission Board members, supported by Commission services. Cities are the hearts of communities, the centres of economy, industry and innovation. But most importantly, they are the homes of people. That is why we must tackle the global climate emergency in cities to lead the way towards the European Green Deal and make the whole continent climate neutral by 2050. 
As the former mayor of the capital city Warsaw, I know that to make progress on the climate transition, you need the support of citizens and of private and public stakeholders. Over the past year, members of our board had consultations with citizens, city authorities, member state representatives, business and many other stakeholders. When we ask citizens in virtual events what they thought about climate neutral cities, many told us three things. I believe my city can become climate neutral. I believe Europe can become climate neutral. I want green mobility and green energy and green buildings. And I am ready to change the way I live to contribute my part. That is why we propose to make 100 European cities climate neutral by 2030. We propose to support, promote and showcase 100 cities in their systemic transformation and turn them into experimentation and innovation hubs for all cities. We propose to go beyond sectors and individual programmers to offer a broad, comprehensive answer to the biggest challenge of our time. The introduction of a climate city mission is a radical new way of achieving climate neutrality and of doing it faster by 2030. It strives to promote system innovation in governance, in transport, energy, construction and recycling, supported by powerful digital technologies. The mission requires a change not only in regulations, approach, instruments, but to go beyond existing schemes and habits. A change of attitude not only in the way implementation is ensured, but also in how people and organizations work together. Citizens, local governments, central and regional governments, and even European. We expect citizens, city administration, and political leaders to show commitment, imagination, and determination. We expect you to implement this mission with the same determination as the Americans did with the moonshot. Climate transformation of cities go far beyond the idea of men on the moon. This is the mission of our times. Anna, thank you very much um, for giving us a sense of how citizens are keen to be part of this amazingly ambitious 100 climate neutral cities by 2030. I move now immediately to the last mission, the mission on soil and food, which was chaired by Case Verman, a case was former Minister of Agriculture, is former Minister of Agriculture in the Netherlands, so particularly well qualified to chair this mission. Case, over to you. Dear Commissioners, I, as a Chairman of the Mission Board for Soil Health and Food, have the honor and the privilege to offer you our work of a year, and therefore we have the, the next um, re recommendations. So. First of all, it's really a pleasure and an honor to present you the results of our mission board on soil health and food. It was quite an assignment, I assure you, um, because it's a totally new way of research structuring. This new approach, more focus, bold and timely. Uh, it took some time to internalize the new way of structuring research and innovation projects. Uh, not the usual way of doing it, but how and the new way. Well, it took some time. And secondly, it was a clear assignment. It was about concentration on soil health and food. And what about soil health? Is there a problem? So the first assignment we took for ourselves was to taking stock of the situation. And the situation on soil health is not very reassuring. Uh, in the con on the contrary, it's a problem. It's a big problem. In monetary terms, we lose 50 billion euros per year because the soil is deteriorating in Europe. Taking stock, therefore, as a first step and then the conditions under which we can improve the health of the soil in its relations with food, water purification, nature, biodiversity, 
and other functions of the soil. Because the soil in this approach is at the center. And the third element in our, during our work was the presentation of the Green Deal based on the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. The European Commission announced an ambitious program for creating a new green society. And this Green Deal created for us a framework for making it operational soil health and food as an assignment for the mission. It was a perfect fit at the right moment. And fourthly, we investigated the relations with the other missions. The mission of food and soil health has to do with cancer, of course. It has to do with biodiversity and climate. It has to do with carbon sequestration. It has to do with clean water. So we came to the more or less arrogant conclusion that soil was at the center of the other missions too. So, fifthly, then came COVID, the crisis of this virus, and the direct relation it had with the health of people, but also with the health of the soil, because microbiology has a direct relation with people's health. And it showed the vulnerability of people in their food needs, but also in the quality of the food. So nutritious food is the central element of soil health. So therefore we came with a title that we offer you in this uh, assignment. Caring for soil is caring for life. 75% of the soils should be healthy in 2030. That's our ambition, that's our goal. And of course, we do realize that there are regions with huge problems that cannot fully cope with this ambitious goal. And therefore, we have formulated that there should be reasonable, calculable, measurable improvements to that goal. And therefore, we formulated re research and innovation suggestions and propositions a research and innovation calendar. Therefore, we formulated targets, objectives, and made very clear what the next steps in the future for research and innovation should be. And therefore, we also made an operational approach, creating life lighthouses and living labs, where people, farmers, scientists, practitioners, citizens can meet and can try the new ways of greening the landscape and changing agricultural methods and also increasing biodiversity and improving landscapes. And not lastly, we have a, a huge assignment before us that's now going to be realized and that's how to engage people because it all depends on the engagement of people taking part into this, what we call, great transformation of greening society, that we all have a responsibility, not only scientists, not only politicians, but every citizen and every consumer. So that's the real assignment for all of us. So therefore, dear commissioners, we offer you our work, our year, a year's work. And we had some, well, quite vivid discussions, but in the end, we are unanimous and offer you our work. Thank you. Kees, thank you very much. And thank you very much for indeed highlighting also that all five missions are intimately linked uh, with each other. Well, Commissioners, uh, you have now heard the, the five um, uh, mission board chairs. Uh, and as you heard, this is about delivering public goods into society. So, yes, uh, Maria and her teams can ensure that this is made possible with uh, knowledge and solutions from research and innovation, but you need to deliver it with her. So we now have uh, the privilege of hearing you uh, react to the presentation. Um, Commissioner uh, Kiriakizu, I think you are starting uh, reacting to the uh, presentation of Walter Ricciardi, but if you want to cover other aspects, obviously you are very welcome to do so. Commissioner, over to you.
Thank you. Thank you, dear board members, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I want to start thanking all 15 members of the mission for cancer, especially for their dedication and hard work, but all the mission members of all the five missions, uh, and for looking, as you said, at the true vision for uh, solidarity in Europe, for sustainability, and in the case of cancer, for looking at how we can deal and addressing this growing challenge of cancer in Europe. A very special uh, thanks to uh, my colleague Maria for uh, really her hard work and dedication and the close work we have uh, had together in working for the Europe's Beating Cancer Plan and through the Cancer Mission Board. Your goal as a Cancer Mission Board of saving three million lives and enabling citizens uh, to live longer and better by 2030 really resonates very close to, to uh, my own. And I'm very, very uh, happy that you're pro proposing such an ambitious approach. Um, you're proposing an approach with actions across disciplines, uh, but always keeping citizens and patients at the center, which is very crucial. And your actions that you're proposing address the whole cancer pathway from uh, prevention to early diagnosing, to treatment, to survivorship, to end of life care and care. And they also address all cancer. And these objectives mirror uh, Europe's beating cancer plan, which we'll be coming forward with at the end of this year. A plan that uh, really has become even more imperative due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Because we all know, and I'm sure that you are all aware, how the pandemic has impacted, uh, in many cases, negatively on cancer patients. There have been um, screening programs have had to be put on hold. Surgeries have had to be delayed. Cancer patients are too frightened to access hospitals because of COVID-19 uh, concerns. And we need to address these. And Europe's Beating Cancer Plan is going to be also looking at the dimension of how the pandemic has impacted on the lives of, co of uh, cancer patients uh, and their families. I'm really very grateful that the members of the Mission Board and the Assembly have been engaging with citizens at the local level and speaking to them in, about cancer in their own language, the way that they uh, understand it, taking into account their concerns and hopes. Uh, no, no cancer patient has uh, the same journey. Uh, and the same life experience, as no other, ca as no cancers are the same. And so we really need to address it in this way, as you have, in order to really achieve an equitable approach. The cancer mission uh, also builds on a health in all policies, uh, looking at the strongest impact that we need to have on society. Uh, and it's going to be looking at this together with the cancer, the Europe's Beating Cancer Plan. Uh, it is... A, the Europe's Beating Cancer Plan is going to be uh, very closely working with the uh, Board on Cancer because we have key elements and objectives which are very important. And we need to look at this, how we can integrate research and innovation into improving cancer outcomes. So um, I want to highlight uh, particularly four recommendations that I picked up. First of all, one on effective cancer prevention strategies and policies. This is um, uh, the proposed actions would see targeted support from member states because we need to address tobacco consumption, alcohol, and exposure to cancerous workplace in cancerous substances in the workplace, but also in the environment. The second uh, recommendation is on optimizing screening programs and developing novel approaches for screening and, and early detection. And let me say, I, it, I find it unacceptable that in a Europe of 2020, there are so many inequalities in cancer survivals across Europe and within, mem across member states and within member states due to screening programs not being implemented or even accessible uh, to citizens in the same way. And we need to make a difference with this. We cannot go on uh, like this. So we need to, uh, to work uh, towards uh, this. And also looking at your third recommendation, uh, for a better uh, EU-wide cancer uh, um, prevention and care infrastructure. We can and need to do more. Uh, finally, 
I want to just say that together with the Mission on Cancer and Europe's Beating Cancer Plan, we have a unique opportunity. President von der Leyen had placed cancer, the Europe's Beating Cancer Plan as a, a flagship of, of this commission. And it is a unique opportunity because uh, we are all, all my colleagues, all commissioners, um, dedicated to, to, to making a difference. And together with the Mission Board on Cancer, we can make a difference for the citizens of Europe uh, in cancer care and for the patients of Europe. Uh, we are committed, we are working together. We will be now looking at all the recommendations that you have been putting forward, and we will join our energies uh, and our commitment in order to bring about uh, a change and to make a difference for Europe's citizens and Europe's cancer patients and their families. Thank you again for the opportunity, and really, uh, I, I wish everyone to stay safe and uh, congratulations on the great work. Thank you. Commissioner Kirgidou, thank you so much. Uh, thank you on behalf also of Walter Riccardi and his entire team. And uh, you can count um, on, on the mission and on the teams of uh, Maria Gabriel here in the DG to team up uh, to deliver uh, this, the outcomes which you have highlighted. Can I move uh, over, Commissioner Wojciechowski, to agriculture and allow you to comment on the mission of Kis Verman? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the invitation. I'm uh, very honored uh, to be with you today and to attend this uh, special moment, the official handover, five recommendations, uh, uh, the recommendations for farm missions uh, under Horizon Europe and, and beyond. Uh, I'd like to thank the mission chairs and the mission boards for their hard work. Uh, their inspiration and their support to help us uh, launch a new instrument and embark upon an exciting new process. Uh, while addressing different challenges, uh, all missions have in common a compelling vision and a master plan uh, on how to progress towards that vision beyond research and innovation. It's now up to us to turn this vision, these vi visions into reality. You will certainly understand that the, as a Commission for Agriculture and Rural Development, the mission caring for soil is caring for life is very close to my heart. Professor Verman, the chair of the mission board, Soil, Health and Food, has summarized very well the essence of the mission and uh, its goal to have 75% of healthy soil by 2030 uh, for food, for people, nature and climate. And he is completely right. Without soil, there is no life. It is uh, the very resource on which we all depend to many soils, not only in the EU, but worldwide, uh, are threatened. The mission uh, touches upon the very basis of how we produce our food and how we manage our forests, how we manage our landscapes and even urban spaces. Uh, it is also about uh, protecting uh, nature and biodiversity and becoming more resilient to deal with climate change. The mission fully addresses the EU political priorities, in particular the objectives of the Green Deal. I have followed the development of the mission almost from the start and uh, in close contact with uh, Commissioner Gabriel. I have been fascinated by how it has evolved, uh, taking on board the views of scientists, uh, stakeholders and citizens, the views of all of us. I'd like to congratulate the chair and the members of the Mission Board Soil Health and Food for taking uh, communication and citizen engagement so seriously. The number of mission uh, events, mission events with involvement of board members is very impressive. 
this reflect a new, unprecedented way of working together to identify needs for research, innovation and policy that matter um, in day-to-day -day lives uh, of people. From the feedback received, it becomes clear that all of us uh, as citizens share the sense of urgency that we need to act now to reverse the trends that have led to land degradation. We absolutely need to restore soil health. Uh, the mission caring for soil is caring for life comes at the right moment and to work in tandem with the common agriculture policy and the European Innovation Partnership in particular. By linking research and innovation directly to the environmental, climate and economic ambitions of the new common agricultural policy, we will help farmers and foresters to manage soil more sustainably and produce in ways that meet current and future social needs. Additional instruments will need to be mobilized to address uh, soil health also in urban areas and through actions in other sectors, including the food industry. In the context of mission implementation, let me highlight that the five proposed missions are interconnected and uh, will mutually support each other. Uh, this is uh, for me a particular strength. For example, by increasing the carbon content in soil, the soil mission will support the objectives of the mission on climate adaptation. Uh, or by reducing the use of pesticides in agriculture, the soil mission will benefit the ocean mission. And there are many synergies uh, the other way around. These examples show that the mission are not only about combining funding instruments, in fact, they will require working closely together across, uh, across policy domains. I would like to thank uh, Commissioner Gabriel, Gabriel for uh, her leadership in the promoting through the missions a cross-sectoral and cross-policy approach to solve major societal challenges. This session today is an example of this collaborative sp spirit with colleagues from across the Commission working together and taking uh, ownership of the mission. Commissioner Gabriel, thank you for your invitation today. I would like to re reassure you and the mission chairs that you have my full support for making mission a success also beyond research and innovation. Thank you very much. Commissioner Wojciechowski, thank you very much for showing so much ownership on the missions. Um, joint ownership across the college is what will indeed be needed. And I now have the pleasure to ask you, Commissioner uh, Sinkiewicz, to react to Pascal's presentation. Commissioner, please. Colleagues, Commissioners, Chairs of the Mission Boards, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you. Thank you for your report. I'm certain that it will help us develop new actions and policies to protect and restore our oceans and waters. It is one of the urgent and defining tasks of our time. Personally, I truly like uh, the idea of the missions and the reference to uh, the Apollo mission to put mankind on the moon. Who would have thought that 50 years ago that we would develop maybe even more ambitious missions to keep mankind safe and healthy here on our own planet. Yet, that is exactly what we are doing today. The missions are helping to bring the European Green Deal to life. From the policy side, we have set a clear direction for the future, and it is climate neutrality by 2050, zero pollution a fair, clean and green society. We rely on science, on research and development to map out the route for us to, so we stay on track and of course achieve our goals. Restoring the health of our oceans and waters 
is one of those goals. We want to deliver on that ambition already by 2030. This means we need to reduce human pressures on marine and freshwater environments. Our zero pollution uh, ambition is very important in this context, as is our chemical strategy. It means we need to restore degraded ecosystem, and it means we have to harness the essential goods and services they provide in a sustainable manner as a part of a circular carbon neutral economy. All our efforts will not only bring results at home, they will also contribute to the implementation of the United Nations 2030s Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Decade of Ocean Science. By showing leadership, we will also gather momentum internationally. Ladies and gentlemen, for years we have been talking about turning points and pivotal moments, but nothing has made the urgency more clear than COVID-19 crisis. It is a wake-up call to finally get on with the fundamental changes we have been talking about for so long. And let's make sure that the post-COVID world is a different one, more resilient, more healthy, more peaceful in all meanings of the word. And I strongly agree with Pascal Lamy and the Mission Board, who in their final report say that investing in natural capital should be on top of the agenda, as member states develop their recovery and resilient plans before next spring. The mission could help through developing new business opportunities linked to the restoration of aquatic ecosystems and the development of a sustainable blue economy related to technological and societal innovation. This will also help diversify and grow our coastal economies. I want to end with a point about synergies between the different missions, and in particular between the ocean and waters mission and the, ones, the one on the climate adaptation. We all know that climate change is changing the state of the ocean and waters, and that the critical functions they fully fulfill. At the same time, many of the solutions to climate change impacts such as erosion, flooding, can come from the ocean. So it is crucial to consider the strong interdependence also between the two missions and, for example, promote nature-based solutions and freshwater and marine ecosystem services in the climate adaptation mission. I will leave my intervention at this. My sincere thanks and congratulations again to Pascal Lamy, to Commissioner Gabriel for her leadership, of course, to all the mission boards for their reports. We will now look into the proposal on the ocean and waters mission and provide the way forward through the communication of the Commission on Horizon Europe missions at the end of this year. Thank you. Commissioner Sinkavicius, thank you very much uh, for this acknowledgement of the work done uh, by Pascal and his entire team. There will be tomorrow uh, plenty of opportunities to uh, go into details for each of the missions. There will be sessions for each of the missions where you will also have many commission services available to demonstrate that this is a joint effort, as commissioners, I think, have put it very clearly. Maria, I, I, I leave it to you to close the session. Thank you very much, Jean-Éric. First of all, I would like really to say thank you. Thank you to our mission board chairs for the strong messages. At the beginning, I said that we are facing challenges, but you, what you said us today is that we are able to identify solutions together with all stakeholders, with our citizens, with our institutions, with our member states, with our regions. And we are not only able to identify solutions, we are able, by joining forces, identifying new ways of doing partnerships, synergies, new programs, new instruments, to implement them together with all these stakeholders that were at the beginning of this process. And that's something quite new. I would like again to say thank you, because in one year we have seen the extraordinary evolution. At the beginning, we all agree there is a need of holistic approach, there is a need of systemic change, dear Pascal, Klandai. But now, we need concrete recommendations, we need concrete instruments, we need concrete engagement, commitments, timetables, and will be able to deliver. Because above all, it's about our citizens. So thank you very much, dear fellow commissioners, dear Virginius, dear Janos, dear Stella. And there is much more you will discover this next month that are 
engaged, that they are committed, and I think that together we are sending a very strong message. We are facing challenges, but we are able to deliver together with all of you. So thank you very much. And now I have all these extraordinary reports in my hands. What I would like to wish to all our participants, please be inspired by them and after there to implement them together with us. Thank you. Gracias.